Hey guys, Garrett here, and today I want to dive a little deeper into my DIY geothermal system. I want to tell you exactly the components that I used, as well as their exact costs, everything that went into my system. Now when I say DIY, I mean more or less I bought a kit, it was through my supplier, we just put all the pieces and parts and everything together and I bought it all at once. I did not buy tanks and all kinds of interesting ways that you can do things to make geothermal systems on your own. This is basically a kit that I installed myself. My house has 5,400 square feet of finished living space plus another 600 feet of storage space, all of which is heated and cooled. So whenever we were looking at my system, we had to size everything correctly based off of all of that square footage as well as my building method, which was ICF. Well, since it is a more efficient home, that means that I can reduce the size of the unit that I put in place. However, something to keep in mind whenever you are sizing your system is you need a certain amount of CFM of airflow going through those vents to get everything heated and cooled effectively. I ended up going with two separate systems. So I have a three ton as well as a four ton system within my house. So I have seven ton total to do my 6,000 square foot house. But realistically, it is a little bit oversized for my building method. However, again, I needed a certain amount of airflow to make everything even within the house. So this is what we went with. In hindsight, I probably could have reduced total about a ton out of it. So I had a two and a half and a three and a half ton, and it probably would have done just fine. But you live and you learn. When I was looking at geothermal systems, there's lots of them out there, but I chose Bosch. And the main reason is it's been around for a long time. It is proven and it is very, very reliable over a long period of time. I could have gone with a cheaper system, but they don't necessarily have all the history that these Bosch units do. So that's what I went with. And here is what I have. It is the Bosch SM series. So for my three ton unit, I got the SM036 model. It is three ton. It has a 10 kilowatt strip heater within it as well as a desuperheater. And it costs $5,597.53 and that does include tax. So remember all of these figures that I'm gonna give you do include our sales tax, which is seven and a half percent. To go with that unit, I chose a pump that was a GT Flow Center, and it's a single pump unit, and it cost $707.35. For my other unit, it was a four ton unit, so it was a Bosch SM048. And again, four ton. It has a 15 kilowatt strip heater within it, as well as a desuperheater. Now I didn't need these superheaters in both of these. I was really intending just to have one, but it was one of those things that my supplier had these in stock. And if I was to get the exact model that I wanted, I might've had to actually pay a little bit more because it would have had to have been trucked in. To go along with the four ton unit, I also used another GT Flow Center. This one actually had two pumps within it and it cost $890.96. To go along with these units, I needed a fair amount of plumbing as well. And this included things like shut off valves, all kinds of fittings, hoses, that sort of stuff, as well as the limes that actually get buried out in the yard. So I had seven ton worth of heating and cooling power, which meant that I needed seven loops worth of line that had to go be buried. Each loop was 600 feet long, and of course I did a coiled system of which I told you about in my last geothermal video. The loops that were put in the ground were HDPE three quarter inch pipe that was the size SDR 11. I've heard of people wanting to use PEX to put their loops in, and honestly, I don't know if that's correct or not. My supplier recommended the HDPE, so that's what I went with. I know it's been tried and true for quite a long time. Those three quarter inch loops that are buried in the ground come into my house, get collected in what I made was a homemade manifold type system, and then basically upsized to an inch and a quarter, which goes then to the pump, as well as the geothermal system. We also had a fair amount of electrical, again, partly because there was a 10 kilowatt uh, strip heater in one unit and a 15 kilowatt strip heater in the other unit. 
So total electrical, and this was me doing it myself, was $786.98. Since my project was a new build, I'm gonna go ahead and include the ductwork within this too. So the actual parts for the ductwork were $2,741.33, plus another $6,150 to have that all installed. So the total for all the ducting, including the parts and the labor was $8,891.33. So when you combine everything that I just listed out, it comes out to $25,959.73, which sounds like an absolute mountain of money. And let's be realistic, it is. But you gotta remember that's two systems. So if you have a smaller house, you may only need one system and you could effectively cut that in half. The good news for those of us that are doing this in the United States is that, at least at the time that I was doing it, there was a 30% federal tax credit. So when you add up everything that I spent, which was $25,959.73, multiply it by that 30%, that comes out to $7,787.92. So that's in a tax credit that I get back off of my taxes, actual dollar for dollar tax credit. And on top of that, my local utility offers incentives for those that are doing geothermal systems. So they gave me another $250 per ton in an actual check uh, just right to me. So since I had seven ton, it ended up being $1,750 that they just wrote me a check for. So when you add up the tax credit plus the rebate that I got, I got $9,537.92 off of that. So again, my total was $25,959.73. You minus out the tax credit as well as that rebate. It comes out to a grand total of $16,421.81. Now that sounds pretty good, doesn't it? But remember, that has the ductwork in it as well. So again, if you're doing a retrofit, you can deduct roughly a third of that. So let's go through those numbers. So if you minus the ductwork out of my system, the total comes out to $17,068.40, which means then the tax credit does reduce some down to $5,120.52, but my utility rebate stays exactly the same at $1,750. So the total that we can deduct off of this now is $6,870.52, making the grand total, minus all that ductwork, $10,197.88. And again, that's for two geothermal systems. If I would have bought some decent quality, just air-to-air -air regular heat pumps at say a 14 sear rating, I would have spent at least that $10,197 on those systems. And part of the reason is they have refrigerant in them and therefore I would have had to have a licensed HVAC guy install all of that stuff. Well, my geothermal systems are all closed units, meaning I don't have to have anyone to do any refrigeration work on these. So 10 grand may sound like a lot on HVAC systems, but when you compare the efficiencies that I'm getting out of my system versus a comparable of just a regular heat pump, I'm probably using 40 to 45% less electricity than if I would have used one of those regular heat pump systems. So I basically got this system down to a cost equivalent to a decent heat pump system, and I get to save almost half on the electricity usage. So this is a total win-win. So if you're willing to put in some of the effort and the time to install these things yourself, it brings it down to where there is no actual payback period when you factor in the cost of the regular heat pump versus the geothermal heat pump. They are at that point equivalent. Therefore, you just reap the benefits of less electricity every single month. I also want to clarify one thing in my last geothermal video. I mentioned that a person, assuming they buried their pipes deep enough and their ground temperatures and the temperatures of the liquid stayed above a certain point, they may not have to put any antifreeze in. I was wrong. Although I disagree a little bit with what the manufacturers recommend, they recommend a minimum of a 20% solution of antifreeze to 
water and they are the ones providing your warranty so read this book whenever you get it read it from cover to cover and make sure you comply with their recommendations you do not want to screw anything up plus with a closed loop system there's always a chance of bacterial growth within your system so that antifreeze that you do put into your pipes will have an antibacterial solution within it so it will keep bacterial growth at bay Make sure you hit that subscribe button down below as well as the like button. I sure hope this helps you guys, gives a little bit of the numbers associated with it so you guys can have an idea of where you're gonna end up at the end of this. It's gonna be quite a bit of money out, but by the time you get those tax credits as well as any rebates, it's going to be well worth it and you will not regret it. So again, thank you guys. I will see you next time.